Hi everyone, Mr. K here again with another video. Uh, this time we're going to talk about automatic shooting or automatic firing or holding the key to shoot. Uh, I have no idea what this is called. I tried finding a term for it and I got nothing. So who knows what I'm going to call this when I actually put it up. But anyway, um, this is something I showed you earlier in the year, but um, I wanted to show you again just because, well, it's been a while and having a video of it would be useful. So the basic gist here is that when you have your game, um, having your player mash the keyboard might not be desirable, so it might be useful to change the controls. So they just have to hold down the key in order to fire. But that comes with some problems. If you don't have it set up the right way, like I have at the moment, it doesn't really work the way you probably want. These are individual lasers, but I'm basically creating a beam. Um, you probably want a little bit of a cooldown in between each shot, so I don't know, like a quarter of a second, tenth of a second, something like that. So the plan here is to go through that. It's actually pretty simple, so this should be a short video. And let's get started. So what I have so far is, well, you saw the game. I have my sprites and my objects. Sprites, really not much to say there, but the objects, I have my avatar, my rocket ship, whatever, and the laser. My laser, we're not going to touch. It has some code in it what, uh, to begin with. It's got its direction, which it just pulls from wherever, um, whatever direction the avatar is facing. This is useful down the road in case you want to have your ship start rotating or something. It'll always fire in whatever direction your ship is. And, of course, outside room, destroy instance. This is just a memory cleanup thing because you're going to be firing a lot of lasers, and you don't want them piling up outside in infinity. So, as soon as they leave the room, get rid of them. The avatar at the moment, which is not much going on there. I don't have any movement in there. Just to keep it simple, there is the press the Z key to fire. Um, I'm sorry, not press, hold the Z key to fire. But as you saw, that's not doing what we want it to do. We want it to have a little bit of space in between shots. So, that's what we are going to clean up. Um, what I suggest you do, for those of you who are really trying to push yourself to be better, pause the video and try to come up with a list of actions. doesn't need to be game maker actions, but list of like pseudocode that should happen and then try to translate that into code. I mean, I'm going to tell you how to do it anyway, but if you're really trying to push yourself to get good at this, try to go through it on your own. So break this down into its most fundamental steps. Um, yes, we want the laser to fire every um, every so often. So what are the actual steps that goes through it? And if it helps, think about firing in reality. Think of a machine gun, okay? Um, what has to happen? Or think of firing, I don't know, if you watch any sci-fi um, cooldowns and things like that. All right. Um, so pause it, try it out, and if not, don't pause it. Just keep watching because I'm going to give you the answer anyway. Okay. So hopefully you came up with something like this. Uh, is the laser ready? If it is ready, then fire the laser. And then the laser is not going to be ready because you just fired it. And then the laser becomes ready again. And you basically just loop through this. This is pretty terrible pseudocode. But I wanted to give you something to work with and a plan for what we are going to do. Um, so we're going to try to mimic this in Game Maker, which is going to be pretty simple because we could pretty much take a laser and these three lines and replace it with alarm. We're going to set an alarm to see um, to keep track of when we can fire, when we cannot fire. And it's really done with like four lines of code and it's pretty straightforward, but there are some quirks that we have to pay attention to, so we'll knock those out too. So let's go to it. So first things first, uh, before we do anything in here, we want to set up a variable for ourselves and this is just good practice. So in the create event, I'm going to set a variable called laser cooldown. And I'm going to set this to 0 0.25. Now, the reason for this is um, it's good practice because in the event you want to change this, it's going to be very easy to go back to your create event and just tweak the number. Say you don't like 0.25, you want to lower it to the 0.1, or maybe it's still too short. You want to raise it up and you want to put the 0.5 or 1 or whatever it may be. It's located in one spot. You don't have to worry about digging for it. Um, the other thing here is the number itself. Uh, oh, I backtrack. I forgot to say something. Power-ups also. Instead of trying to change your entire code, if you pick up power-ups, you can just mess with this laser cooldown variable itself and not have to worry about 
doing all, all kinds of complicated things. So if you pick up a power-up, change laser cooldown to 0.1, now all of a sudden you got rapid fire. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, the number itself, why am I choosing 0.25? Um, I'm going to explain that a little bit later, but for the time being, keep in mind that this number is in seconds. Okay? Uh, I know Game Maker typically uh, operates on steps and um, frames, room speed, but this is going to be seconds. This is going to be our laser cooldown is going to be 0.25 seconds, a quarter of a second. Okay? Just keep that in the back of your head, and I'll explain why in a bit. All right, so back to our actual code here. Um, we have instance create, and the object laser will be created right at the center of our, or wherever the origin is of our avatar, which in my case happens to be the center. So first things first, we need to check to see if the laser is ready, or in our case, if the alarm is ready. So I have no alarm set up at the moment, but I'm going to use alarm zero. So if alarm zero less than or equal to zero. Now, I'm using less than or equal to for one major reason, is that alarms, they count down to zero, but if I just put equal zero, then this if statement will only return true at zero, not at negative one, which is what alarms technically go to. Alarms count down all the way from wherever they start. So if they start, it started at 60, they go all the way down to zero, they trigger, and then they turn themselves off. And they turn themselves off by setting themselves to negative one. So alarms just don't count down to zero, they count down to negative one. So we're going to put this at less than or equal to zero just to make sure that if, you know, you, they're not holding down the key, while the alarm's going to go all the way down to negative one, they should still be able to fire after that. Okay? So, in here, we're going to put in our actual code for what's going to happen. And if you worked with alarms before, you know, you know that something else needs to happen in here besides just creating the laser. We need to reset the alarm as well. So this is where our variable from before is going to come back. Laser cooldown, I hope that's what I called it, times room speed. There we go. Now. Laser cooldown, like I said before, is measured in seconds. Room speed is how fast your room is. The default is 30. I typically set mine to 60. Some of you might do something in between. Strange. I don't know what it is. I know the book we use had it set down to 10 for some dumb reason. Um, so what do you have to keep in mind here? This is room speed. Room speed, remember, is how many steps occur in one second. So for all intents and purposes, this room speed will always equal one second. Whether it's 30, whether it's 60, whether it's 40, whether it's 120, this will always be one second, okay? This, we have set to 0.25, which means it's going to be 0.25 times whatever our room speed is, which is a second, always a second. So if I had this set to 1 and our room speed is 60, well, that means it's this whole thing comes out to be 60. Well, if the room speed is 60, and this thing's set to 60, it's one second. Okay? Um, I hope I'm explaining that okay, but basically the gist here is, if you have a number times room speed, it will always come out to be seconds, because room speed is measured in steps per second, the units cancel out, and basically you don't have to worry about, oh god, how fast is my room, and how many steps is that? No. Just do however long you want in seconds times the room speed, and you don't got to worry about it anymore, okay? All right, so now we have our alarm check. If the alarm is ready to go, it's going to create the instance of our laser, and then we're going to reset the alarm. So the only thing left we need is the actual alarm itself. Now I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to run the game, and it's not going to work, even though it should, but it's not. I'm hitting the key, I'm holding down the key, and it fired once, and that's it. Let's open back up our object avatar, and my alarm is gone. This is something some of you might have noticed before. In fact, uh, I've had some of you tell me about it, is you, you're putting in an event, and then it just keeps disappearing. I don't know why it's disappearing. Where, where the hell is it going? Well, GameMaker has this kind of thing where they clean things up for you. 
we had an alarm event with nothing in it. So when we hit OK and we come back to it, it said, oh, I guess you're not really using that, so we'll just get rid of it for you. Well, thanks. That was really nice of you to clean things up for me, but I kind of want that there. So what you have to do is you have to basically put something there just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. So this is dumb. I don't know. Put a comment there. Put something stupid in there. It doesn't matter. As long as it doesn't do anything that interferes with anything else, now all of a sudden my alarm will stay put. And if I run the game, now it's working. Okay. So a little bit of a uh, quirk in the code. And they do warn you that in the help documents. Uh, they do say that if the alarm event is empty, then it won't run. And they're right, it won't run. So make sure you have something there. Comment out some code, and it'll fire. So I'm holding down the Z key, and every sh uh, every shot's coming out at quarter of a second. Even even if I mash, I can't get faster than that. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Um, yeah, that's it. If you got any questions or comments, leave them. And I hate asking this, but I'm going to say you're logged in like the video or dislike the video you can do that too um, I need to know if these things are actually working and are effective so like or dislike up to you but um, yeah I need to know if I need to fix anything oh sorry about that I just got an alarm to do something uh, anyway that's it bye